to do this talk that was originally 45 minutes, so I'm just going to keep talking. Okay, <laughs> let's, this is not a security talk. This is kind of the opposite. You want security, we'll talk about it later. This is just put the Wi-Fi in the thing talk, which is what I do. <laughs> okay, so this is what I did. I wanted to automate everything because it's really fun to do it. I love gadgets. I mean, all you guys are holding gadgets too. Gadgets are awesome. Why not make everything you own a gadget? Um, this is how I learned what to automate. I learned some things that I really shouldn't have automated, and I'm a massive AliExpress customer now. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's way more interesting, if you have time, to build the thing yourself for 20 cents than to spend $1,000 on it. It's fun. Um, it feels like it's 20 cents because I'm paying myself nothing. It's actually, if I was, yeah, it costs a bit more than that. Um, so, if you want to put... Wi-Fi, automate everything, start here. Arduino is awesome. It is built to be accessible to non-programmers, and most of you are programmers, so this ought to be lovely and fun to do one weekend. So here's how you get one. This is how I get one. You go to dealextreme.com. If you live in New Zealand or Australia, shipping is free. So you can buy a 70 cents board and have it shipped to you for free. It'll turn up in three months, but it'll be... <laughs> <laughs> It's still really fun. If you buy it from a New Zealand retailer, you're paying more like $30 for a board. Um, that's because there's things like duty and GST and tax that they spend on things like schools and hospitals and stuff. But you can avoid all that and buy it straight from China. Okay, so what, what is Arduino? Okay, this is a confusing term a little bit because Arduino is two things. It's the board and the bottom of my slide, which is cut off, it's also an IDE. So, um, what it really is, it really is this IDE that you write a subset of C, the easy bits of C, in there, and then you send it to the board over USB, and then the board runs your code. There, like that. <laughs> cool. So um, don't, don't be scared by all the words. This is a complicated one that I happen to have open. Your code will be simpler. But um, what you do is you download Arduino, you get it on the screen, and you go to the examples, and it gives you an example for all these things. So you have an example of how to do something, and then you hack it a bit to do it slightly differently, and you're done. Um, so here's some code. This is, this is a full piece of code that you do. You tell it, I want pin 13 to be an output, and then I'm going to turn it on, and wait a second, and turn it off. And it just, what it's going to do is make a LED light off, light off, light off, forever. So you've just written some code. And there are so many Arduinos, don't worry about it, they all work. Just buy one you think is pretty and plug it in and it works. Um, so along came this thing called an ESP8266. There's got to be like a two-syllable way of saying that, but I haven't found it yet. But you end up saying that all the time. Um, it's this little board, it, look, it originally looked like this, and someone put it out saying this will do Wi-Fi for you with the idea that you bought an Arduino or something and you connected up this Wi-Fi modem-like thing and now with some really complicated code you had Wi-Fi. The open source community said, that's cool, but we can do better. What if we put the code in the modem? So someone got that working. And then someone got it working better, and someone else got it working even better, and it's now extremely accessible. You can write really simple code and have it run in here and have Wi-Fi just working. Um, later gen of ESP8266 started to look like that. Um, and then people started making this. This You can get these off AliExpress for about $10 US. They're called WeMOS. I think that's how you say it. Um, you probably, well, they're $10, so you probably want about 10 <laughs> <laughs> And you just put them everywhere, um, and you connect cool things up to it and automate it. You put a web server in there. You can put a REST API in there. It could be the server. It could be the client. It's up to you. Just build something cool. Uh, there are so many boards that are based on ESP8266 now. There's Oak up the top, which means you didn't even have to understand Wi-Fi. They just made it that you call functions over what in your JavaScript on your server, and they run on the board. You don't even have to think about it. So you know JavaScript, you know Python, you know how to send a curl command, who knows, and it runs on the board. Um, and on the board it does something, like on a, open the window. The second one's a sewable one. So you, you, you sew all those little pins on and now you've got Wi-Fi in your sock or wherever it is. <laughs> um, the code looks a bit like this. Um, you give it your passphrase or use something useful to put the passphrase there and then it connects, and when it's connected, it's doing stuff. 
Um, the thing to remember, there's no operating system here. There's no network stack. You're not running a thing and then having the network magically do it. You have to understand a little bit. So it can be a little bit of a mess. Global scope is a terrible mess. Unlike, you have scope in Python. and C, it's just, you called your variable the same thing as someone else. It's all over. But hey, moving on. Um, so when you're buying things, the only thing to stress about, is it five volts, is it three volts? Those seem to be the most popular thing. If it matches up, buy all the things. Worst case, you spent $2 and it was wasted. I mean, that's about it. Don't, don't stress. Try it, break a few things, fry your 20 cents board, buy another one, have fun. Um, yeah, if, if you're feeling bad about the $10, skip coffee for two days and you're broken even, right. Um, this is what I did. I decided to put Wi-Fi in my hat. Um, so that's, that's a Wi-Fi board, because um, I live in Wellington and it cold, it's cold sometimes, so I have a hat. I wanted to check how cold, how humid, um, things like that. So when I get on my bus, and my bus is freezing cold, um, I have a log file to prove it. That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, there's me and my hat. <laughs> um, that's another thing I built. Um, where's the Kiwis? Kiwis, yeah. Who love Fijoas are delicious. They came from South America, but now Kiwis are obsessed with them. I have a Fijoa tree, and I want it to be happy, to make lots of delicious Fijoas. Um, so what, what do Fijoas want? They want light. So I bought this uh, phototransistor. There's something like 20 cents for 10. You know, you don't, don't need many. So I hooked it up to what they call the GPIO, which don't freak out about that. It's just... When I'm doing writes and reads from pins, where I've connected this photoresistor, that's GPIO. It's just a bunch of letters, right? Um, the other thing it needs is soil moisture, so I'll add this. I put two nails in the soil um, to check what sort of current passes between the two nails. If more current flows, there must be water. If less flows, there's not much water. So I could read how much water is in the soil underneath my Fijoa tree. A couple of nails from Bunnings, done. Um, this one, I, this is a temperature and humidity sensor because my Fijoa tree cares about that, so I bought these. Um, you hook that up, um, import a library, call it, and you get the temperature and the humidity at your Fijoa tree. Um, so which brings me on to two concepts. There are sensors, which I've just shown you a whole lot of sensors. They read. You want to actually make things happen because it's kind of like writing. You need an actuator. So an actuator makes something happen. Um, I got a water pump. These, you can get them for $3 from AliExpress. This goes on those Wemos boards. Um, I connect my water pump up to it, and now I'm able to turn my water pump on and off. So in my code, I'll say, if Fijoa tree is dry, turn on the pump for 10 seconds. Um, so these are the things you can turn on. I, I don't have all this, but you can turn on water pumps, lights, and fans. If you live in Wellington, you can raise the wind shelters if you have that. Rotate, the, I'm making this up, rotate the tree. <laughs> but, you know, um, which then leads to more sensors. So I end up having sensors to check if the actuators worked. So did the water pump turn on? Um, is the floor flooding underneath the pot? I, is the water level going up? Um, I learned this from working in power stations, that you don't check, did the water valve open? You check, is there water going downstream? Because that's the real question. If you only checked, did the gate open? You don't actually know what's going on. So if you're building this, don't check, did the water pump turn on? Check, is the moisture going up? It's the right question. Um, so. Um, this is another thing I learned. Don't put all the brains in the Arduino. Make the Arduino dumb. Make the Arduino receive the instruction and do it. Because it's really a pain to have to go out to your tree and get the board and reprogram it and then bring it back you know, every few days. It's much better to make it dumb and put all the brains in, in an old laptop that you keep under a desk somewhere. Um, and yeah, it just obeys, obeys orders. So. And then you mash it up with all the other information there is on the internet. Like, yeah, all this. Has it rained? Is it raining? Will it rain? Um, am I going to get fined for watering my garden today? You know, all that stuff. Is there any water left in my tank? Do I want to keep it in case there's an earthquake this afternoon? Because that happens. Um, <laughs> but, um, I, I use this a lot. I think called Home Assistant. Uh, it's a Python app. It's really nice community and accessible. So. I use this instead of inventing my own UI and web, I just use theirs and plug it in. Um, that's their web page. It's 
easy to install if you're a programmer, but, but yeah. Um, they have cookbooks for doing things. Um, so this is a thing I've done in my house. When you press, this is a very common use case. When it's time to play, the lights dim. When you pause, they come back up. You know, that's simple. Um, just knit all these things together with a few things. Um, when I fall asleep, the lights turn off, which is a little bit annoying for my family because I'm in Hobart right now. And <laughs> <laughs> but basically, um, uh, yeah, this, I have really cheap, crappy heaters, but they're built into my house. They're like, when they took the fireplace out, they put a heater in, and it has no thermostat. So I put a temperature sensor on the side of the room, and when my server hears the temperature, oh, this is 21 degrees, turn the heater off. So I've, I've done that with really cheap heaters. I can keep them, and I can spend a few dollars on a, on a sensor unit. Um, I haven't built that, so I'm going to skip over it. <laughs> Oh yeah, and um, this is a use case I thought was cool. If, if it's going to rain today, the door handle turns blue, so you know that you should really have a raincoat or an umbrella. I have this in my house. <laughs> so th that works really well. I, it's, I, I made a system that's incredibly easy for her to hack. I really want her to work out how to bypass and override this, but it hasn't yet. <laughs> um, so this, this is the metaphor that it's basically about. Um, if you've seen, there's this movie that, that half of New Zealand worked on called Hobart, a uh, Hobbit, <laughs> Hobbit. Um, sorry, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> um, so how this works is when, when there are orcs present, his sword grows blue. It's just a, a very natural. So Bilbo can just glance. He doesn't have to pull out his phone, start the app, tap five times, and say, are there, are there orcs? He just glances. And I think that's what, if you're automating things, you should automate it for just naturally occurring with a glance. Like, the difference between having the bus timetable available in your phone if you go to a URL, versus you're standing there anyway, have a look. So, um, yeah, make it, make it actually in the place where you want it, augmenting things rather than being work. Um, it, I'd like my house and everything to be a naturally responding to the people and what they're doing in the house, rather than, I, I hate, I go to my friend's house and you have to turn the lights on by going to a URL and tapping, it just doesn't work. Um, so another thing I have automated in my house is the lights. These are the things that you can buy if you want to automate the lights, make them go up and down when the movie comes on, or when you wake up, or when it's time for bed, or the child sneaks out of bed. Um, you can buy these brands. And my images aren't working, so, um, yeah. <laughs> um, so I ended up building one. Um, I built it based, um, my own one, based on an oak board with an ESP8266. Oak are an open source company in the US who are releasing these based on the ESP8266, and I really like what they're building. Um, there's a thing called a NeoPixel, which is RGBW lights that you can talk to from one pin. Um, I, if you'd seen the pretty images that aren't working, um, the, I, I gutted out an old USB lamp and put this in instead and stuck it in a wooden box, and it worked quite nicely. Um, I also have the lighting in my house reads my Google Calendar, uh, works out how much sleep I need, and works out what time to wake me up, works time, what time to turn the electric blanket on, all this sort of stuff, um, which is you know, less useful because I'm sleeping in Hobart right now, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, there's this, this pseudo-science idea. I have no idea if it's real science, but you're not supposed to see blue or white light before bed, and that helps you sleep. Um, I tried it, I don't know, it doesn't seem to matter, but um, I do make the house lights go dimmer and more amber in, in the evening. Um, and for detecting if I'm asleep, I have a Pebble watch, but there's lots of watches out there, and my watch can detect that I'm asleep, and lots of them can send a web hook, so they just hit a URL. Um, good thing for me is my URL is like 10.1.1.1, so it's not working right now, so my house is not turning off, so that's good. Um, but yeah, if you do it over the internet, it could work when you're away. Um, and it turns off the heat pump and everything like that. It sets the thermostat down because you don't need a hot room while you're sleeping. Um, and when I wake up, um, it takes a while to, to warm my house. My house was built in 1911, so it takes a little while to get it warm. And uh, it, it's already warm when I wake up in freezing cold Wellington. Um, when I leave the house, doors lock, the alarm's set, and the heater and the lights turn off. It's um, and the point of that, all those things I described, none of them required me to look at my phone. So if, if you have to look at your phone, I think that your, your user experience has just basically failed. Um, so my, my takeaway from this... 
is do this, put Wi-Fi in Bilbo's sword and build it that way. Thank you. Questions. Have five minutes. Questions. Yeah, yes. totally. Do you have questions in the form of a question? <laughs> oh, they went down. <laughs> so you alluded to things that you shouldn't have automated. So what, what's what's one example of something that you automated but shouldn't have? I, I don't know. I changed my mind. I, it was so much fun doing it. Um, the mistakes I've made uh, is turning on water pumps and having things flood. Um, I think um, I've learned that if it doesn't work with the UI that they're used to, like the light switch, so automating, oh yeah, I had a motion sensor. So you go into a room, the light will turn on, you leave and it'll go out. Um, and I really shouldn't have done that. I think humans just want to be able to flick a light switch. So either people go, flick, 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 why is that not working? I'm like, walk in. Oh, I can't walk in, it's pitch black. So um, <laughs> I guess, <laughs> so there's a bit of that. Also, it needs to work when the server falls over, because. Um, the reason the server's going to fall over is because I'm constantly playing with it and iterating. So it's not exactly like production pristine environment, it's where I'm hacking. So I guess everything needs to work on its own, work in the way that it used to, that humans are used to. Otherwise, your family that you use will revolt. And, and um, classically, when my husband gets pissed off, he just pulls the Ethernet cable out of my laptop. And <laughs> So you mentioned a lot of things that involve water, like raining on your Fajoa plant, turning the water pump on. That doesn't usually mix well with the ESP8266 bit. Oh, how like, do I do you waterproof have tips it? On keeping it out of the electronics. Um, it's not well. Rain in Wellington falls down and sideways, but not up most of the time. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it tends to. I tend to use just an upside down Tupperware from the supermarket, and it's in there and. Um, because it's upside down, the water doesn't get in that way. Um, it does corrode, but it takes about a year. So, yeah, but you spend five bucks a year and buy another one. Making me run. No, we have to repeat it for the microphone for the recording. Oh. <laughs> Let's say there's an earthquake and your power goes out. What does your house do? I have a UPS. Um, <laughs> So when the UPS runs out, uh, well, the lights won't turn on and the pump won't turn. I'll have to water the tree myself. <laughs> um, so yeah, a, lo a lot of the things, are they, they augment life rather than replace it. So yeah, it's a good point though. More questions? You, you mentioned the, the measuring water levels. How do, you, how do you measure water levels in your tanks? I haven't got that, but you could do it by having, um, you could measure is it at this level yet by just having a piece of conduction, a piece of wire there. Uh, I've seen ball floats and things like that. Um, yeah. I can also, you can um, extrapolate whether there should be water in there based on when it rained as well. Has your house been electronically haunted and do you think this will become the case <laughs> oh when my your gosh. children yes. learn how? So I learned how, to, I, I set my house up to pretend that someone was home when I was away, So because we went on a holiday at Christmas, and, and when I came back it wouldn't stop. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> I, 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 I don't know, I had to restart Apache or something, I don't know. But yeah, it just, um, yeah, occasionally it feels a bit haunted, hence the ethernet cable getting pulled out. <laughs> Do you want more questions? Yeah, I, I could do. How much more, how fast was I? Oh. Like, totes, totes fast. <laughs> totally. Oh, um, another, I have one piece of random advice. Put your IoT on a different AP than the rest of your thing. <laughs> um, so my light bulbs can't get to the internet if they wanted to. That was going to be my question. Can we talk about the security now? <laughs> I'll talk about security now. So um, I, I do find it a really good idea to have a different passphrase for your IoT, everything you buy, basically. It just gives you a little bit more control. Um, I, like, I bought really cheap lights called My Lights or Limitless LED from AliExpress, and the bridge for it wants to hold open uh, IPs to random places in China and do who knows what but it can't because the only AP it knows is my IoT AP. It's a lot of acronyms. Um, and that one doesn't have internet access unless I need it for a, a quick moment and then I turn it off again. 
One last question. Somewhere in the back of the room so I can run. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you mentioned when you leave the house, uh, the doors lock and all that kind of thing. How do you detect when you're leaving the house to trigger I, I bought some, and again, they don't have internet access. I bought something called an August lock. I spent too much money on it, but it's just on Amazon. But Yeah, you could build your own ones of them. I haven't yet. And that is all the time that cool. we have. Let's all thank Brenda again. <laughs>